Welcome to episode 6 of Fail Succeed. On today's episode, we're discussing burnout, presenteeism, women returning to the workplace, and the importance of having a life outside of work. And we're discussing all of this with Alex Hurst, who through his own experiences of burnout, has launched a company that is bringing a new flexible way of working to the world. There's some great stuff in here and Alex talks really passionately about his own experiences and the mission that's driving him on with Hogsby Collective, his company. I think you'll find a lot of useful stuff in it, so please settle down and enjoy. Alex is the co-founder of the Hogsby Collective, which is a community of people working flexibly. And I think probably uh, the best way of... uh, getting some more colour on this, is if you give us an explanation, Alex, of what exactly the Hoxby Collective is and what it does and the thinking behind it. Sure. So um, the Hoxby Collective, as you you rightly say, is a a community of people, first and foremost. There's 450 of us, roughly speaking, um, across 29 countries. Um, And we all work on our own terms. So everybody has their own predefined work style, Um, which is the word that we've created um, to enable people to talk um, openly and positively about the fact that they don't work a traditional Monday, Friday, nine to five. Hmm. They have a work style of choice that fits around the other things that they've got going on in their lives, whether that's caring for elderly relatives or managing a a disability or um, looking after children, which is obviously the kind of common requirement for flexible working as a parent. Um, but but the reality is that there's a whole whole bunch of reasons these days why people can't or, or don't want to work a traditional um, five day week um, in, on a nine to five uh, pattern. Okay, great. And I mean, look, I personally totally understand uh, the thinking behind this. Right, my idea of of well, I wouldn't say my idea of hell, but I, the idea of going in and working a regular nine to five. It's never really suited my uh, way of working. And, you know, I know a lot of people who are most creative, for instance, really late at night and they stay up very late and they get loads done. And that just doesn't fit in with a lot of workplaces. Right. So I, I, I do think and, you know, having heard about you guys quite a lot, that notion of um, I think you say that this is how people are going to work in the future, don't you? It's and, definitely what we think. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. our belief. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, that rings absolutely true. And I mean, you see that more and more often, don't you, with, um, you know, a lot of people doing freelance work on uh, using sites like People Per Hour, for instance. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. The yes. gig economy is the, the fastest growing labor force in Europe. So that's the migration right. into freelance. And, you know, you could say that a lot of that statistically is being driven by um, businesses like Uber and Deliveroo and airbnb but the reality is that there's a real attraction to to working for yourself for for the benefits of flexibility and Mm -hmm. um, fundamentally autonomy um which is something that people um perform better when they have so it gives gives them autonomy they can produce their best and that's been proven um so we definitely think that this is um this is a shift that we're seeing a fundamental shift in the way work gets done um enabled by technology but also by um by societal preference by the fact that people um as i say crave and want autonomy but also slightly rejecting the rigidity of of work as it's become known to them um because it's no longer relevant so you know the 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 eight hour day was conceived of 201 years ago um when uh, Sir Robert Owen coined the phrase eight hours labour, eight hours recreation, eight hours rest. Is that and right? I never that knew was, that. That was yeah, that was just over two hundred years ago. And it was in response to <clears throat> um the working conditions that people were being put under uh in factories and, and in sort of industrial revolution time where um people were getting exploited basically by the by the corporations that were paying them, but also but also not only in terms of time, but also the conditions. Um, so he, you know, he was a, um, a visionary of his of his time and uh, changed the way people work fundamentally. But in those 200 years, a hell of a lot's changed. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, we now have um, 
access to information and the ability to collaborate um, like never before across continents and, and on our own terms. And I think what we're seeing is um, people's um, work increasingly in eating into their personal lives. They're working longer hours. Um, this always on mentality of uh, responding to emails when you're at home and that sort of thing has been enabled by technology. Um, but, but culturally, we need to shift in order to kind of keep pace with with that and organizations really need to change their outlook on on work um, such that people can work in a, in, a, in a way that integrates with their life rather than fights with it and the, the rigidity of nine to five and Monday to Friday is where the conflict comes when you've when you've got fluidity to balance the two um, then they don't fight with each other you, you can you can balance the two much more easily which is kind of what, what we're advocating for and what we think the future holds let's get into the kind of uh, the story behind uh how you came up with this concept um mm. so you know my research on you it <coughs> looks like you um you had a pretty good career beforehand and things were things were going pretty well and you kind of uh you loved working really hard, right? And that was a that was a buzz for you, but yeah. then something happened, right? Absolutely. And um, I, I, d I am somebody who associates with my work quite closely. Um, I do get a, a sense of self identity from it. Um, but but uh, I kind of um, I reached a point in twenty fourteen uh, where everything was going really well actually I, I was throwing myself into um, my work I was leading a team within a creative agency I was being um, brought in to work on all the um, exciting projects we were um, a young company going through a period of rapid growth which was really exciting and, and I felt um, you know increasingly central to that and increasingly central to the growth of the organization but also to the people within it I felt like um, I was the kind of the glue that was holding it together and I fed off that yeah um and and it gave me you know a, a great sense of um i guess positive feeling and um, self-worth yeah definitely definitely yeah. <clears throat> um the 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 challenge for me i think was and, and i only i can only talk about this sort of as i reflect on it was i would um i would validate my contribution um against time on the basis that there was always more that I could do. Um, but if I did uh, a good, if I did a solid 10 hours in the office every day, yeah. um, which incidentally was plus two hours each day commuting. So I was right. be out 12 hours a day, but I didn't actually rationalize that way. I said 10 hours a day in the office. That's it. That's a 50 hour week. I can't, I don't think I can reasonably do any more than that and add any further value. So anything over that I would probably be too exhausted to, to do anything meaningful. So yeah. it was very much about the, the sort of physical contribution that I could make um, was within those 50 hours. And I would do all I could within that time. And were you being super productive in those 10 hours at work? Would you say you were squeezing every bit of productivity out? I, I would say I was being really busy. I, I wouldn't necessarily, right, say, right, right. I, I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say I was doing the things I should have been doing. Yeah. Um, yeah okay. Yeah. Um, because I was going to say that would be amazing to me if for that c whole 10 hours you were being super yeah. productive I just don't my yeah. feeling is that's very difficult to achieve but uh, sorry well, exa anyway exactly and yeah I, I um but but I think the the thing is I would I'd leave at 6 30 in the morning I'd get home at 6 30 at night and I'd I'd be able to switch off knowing that I'd done done uh, done my job i guess knowing that i felt valued yeah um but i think what what happened was uh, the longer i did that for um the harder i found it to um to enjoy the trade-off um i actually increasingly found myself um kind of growing a little bit detached from kind of why I was really doing it. I didn't really have a, an understanding of um, once I was doing my um, 50 hour week, what I was actually getting from it. Um, okay. And I, I, I can kind of say this retrospectively, but um, 
I reached a point where uh, my wife kind of pointed out to me um, that I was kind of not very present much of the time. I would detach quite a lot when I was at home. And it was because I was um, all consumed by what I was doing during the day. And so and that, that, sorry to interrupt, but does that like, mean you were, um, when you were at home, you were just on your phone reading emails or you just like in front of the TV? How did that manifest itself, you not being present? Um, not being particularly good at listening. Um, so whether that was um, because I was doing something else or not, um, I'd be... Um, my mind would be elsewhere. So I suppose, um, I guess sometimes that would manifest in that I would be on my phone, not always necessarily working, but more um, just processing the day or um, thinking about the next day um, or or thinking about something, one of the projects that we might have been working on at the time or whatever. It, it just consumed my my thoughts, I suppose. I didn't really realise it, but I got sort of increasingly, I guess, pessimistic, um, at worst, apathetic in some of the conversations that I was having at work as well. Um, yeah, and I think that that was just I was I was doing a lot, but I and I but I was validating it against time rather than achievement. I couldn't see what we were achieving, or I couldn't see what I was achieving. So and anyway, you know. I, I think um, I've done a bit of reading around and, and whilst it wasn't sort of diagnosed, I'm fairly sure I was at the sort of point of burnout where um, I'd sort of, I, I'd worked sort of so, so much and consumed myself so much with what the work I was doing that I kind of lost touch with what was going on ar around me. Um, and probably was was a different person i guess uh, overall um as a result probably less less good at work less positive less less good to work with same at home less engaged less communicative and so it was at that point that um you know off the back of doing a little bit of reading and decided let's 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 have a, a week away and see if that helps to just kind of switch off process everything and and reboot so we did that and um, I can't really tell you much about that holiday still um, to this day because, again, I wasn't very present, I don't think. Um, and so whilst I've seen photos and stuff of the things that we did, I I don't have many memories at all of that trip. How, how long ago was this? Well, it was um, 2014, so it was um, four years ago. Okay. So you would expect that you would have some memory of it, yeah. And I, and I, and I do, I do have some memory, but I, but the the gaps are enormous. And when I, um, when we came back from from that holiday, I, I remember saying to my wife that you know I felt no different. I felt exactly the same. I felt the same um, level of sort of tension, anxiety, stress, um, inadequacy. Um, frustration, pessimism, as as I had before I'd gone, and the whole thing had been a waste of time. Really, and and just to clarify, those feelings of anxiety and pessimism were they just uh, work focused, or was it broader than that? Um, they were they were born out of work, but I think they they'd begun to creep into other areas. Yeah, and so I I, I think it was a kind of yeah a, a low point. And you hadn't you you just taken a week off work. You hadn't quit yeah. your job. Yeah, no, that's at the right. Point. Just gone on holiday. Just gone on holiday for a week, and with a view to just uh, being able to switch off and yeah, recharge your batteries. That's sort of thing. yeah. But um, it it didn't it didn't work. But in the moment of discovering that it hadn't worked, that's kind of really when um, I realised that I needed to make some pretty fundamental changes to my psychological contract with work. Is how I talk about it now but really reinvent the way I think about work, what work means to me and why I'm doing it. Because it's, it's a state of mental health that I'm in. And to fix it, I need to 
it, I have to fix it within myself, within my own mind, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and that going away on holiday, of course, was never going to fix it because it's just, it's it's with me. It's not something that you can leave behind. And did you did you know at that point that this was not just solely about the job you were in? Did did you have a very clear sense that it was just about the way that you were expected to work? Because by the sounds of it, you you really enjoyed that job, right? So yeah, it's it's an interesting one, and I, I did enjoy the job. I didn't particularly enjoy the commute. Um, never have done. <laughs> Um, but I think the thing that I've, I think I've discovered most in that moment was it's not about the expectation that others are putting on me. It's about the expectation that I'm putting on myself. Yeah. No one's telling me to do a 50 hour week. I'm telling myself that that's what I need to do. I need to re reimagine what those expectations are in order for me to have a, a happier, healthier life. So, and I think that's a really interesting thing about presenteeism as a concept, uh, which is, you know, there there are cu- cultural cues within an organisation that push people into, into presenteeism, into this idea that they have to be physically present for a certain amount of time in order to be validated as doing a good job. But that is only half the problem. The other half of the problem is in the minds of of individuals who choose to process it and choose to align to it. I wouldn't say that where I was working had a high culture of presenteeism at all, but I would say that I built it in my mind to be something, potentially more than it was, but, it be, but that was because it helped me to rationalise how I was spending my time. And I think that's... The, that's um, that's something that I, I don't think many people realise is that they're doing it every day. They're rationalising how they're spending their time, validating what they're doing um, in their work that way. You know, it's not always it's not always the best way to think about it. So you um, you had this revelation and <laughs> and what then happened? I mean, how quickly did you then start the Hoxby Collective? And 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 then maybe after that, we'll get on to how smoothly or otherwise that went in the beginning but how so how did you kind of go all right I'm going to quit my job and start this business I guess that was sort of the September time 2014 um we were out for drinks around November time um Christmas drinks uh which are inevitably um uh, more more gets consumed at Christmas than at any other time of year. Um, and I was, I was chatting to um, Lizzie, who uh, started the agency that I was working at. Um, and she was talking to me about some of the frustrations that she felt as a working mum, trying to kind of balance um, the running and owning a business and, and doing meaningful work to a high standard whilst also raising a a family starting a family and I was talking about my feelings and how how I was about to leave Um, and um, we kind of concluded that what we wanted was the same thing Um, we were both looking for um, flexibility not not flexibility in you know leaving a few hours early or working from home one day a week, but but ultimate flexibility <clears throat> to say, actually, no, I've got X to do today that's that's more important, and I'm 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 totally empowered and, and within my own rights to to make that call. Um, judge me on what I've delivered, and judge me on my outputs. Don't don't judge me on when and where I do my work. So we're kind of ranting around this subject matter. Um, and kind of came up with the idea of work style and talked about um, what what might be required to enable everybody to have this level of flexibility. Because um, whilst I personally craved it, I didn't necessarily love the idea of being a freelancer and working for myself. Um, I, I actually 
really enjoy working with other people. Um, so how could we make a business model that enables everybody to work on their own terms, but also to work together? Um, so taking the benefits of being freelance and the benefits of being employed and kind of trying to bring them together into something new and, and different that leverages technology and and what we know to be true today in in business um and so that's kind of the where the idea came from for the hoxby collective and it was always going to be um a community of freelancers where every individual has has that right and that control um for as long as a company employs a person ultimately the balance of power is in favor of the employer in some in this is kind of the, the working hypothesis as it was we need to give that power to the people we need to give um, control to individuals to say actually this is how i'm working um, you can judge me on what i do yes but but don't tell me when and where i can do it so that's the sort of um the the birth of the idea and so we we um i i left um that agency probably three months later after having kind of um thought about it evolved it and got to a point where i was ready to connect um and then hoxby was born um shortly after that how smooth or otherwise was that because you know i mean you were bringing something to the market which was a totally different way of working right yes. so i would guess that you face some skepticism to start with is that right or yes was it dead easy uh no <laughs> um no it, it, i knew the answer was going to be no but it's, yeah. it's not easy it never is but i i think um it, in when you're trying to set up a business that does things fundamentally differently um, there's always a, a job to do of not just selling your um, your USP, but also educating people um, on kind of how it works and why it's why it works. Because the model is in itself a new concept and something that's probably still a little bit ahead of its time. I think we're trying to s sort of paint a picture of what the world of work will look like in the future, um, and asking clients to and. and and our members to come on that journey with us. Yeah, yeah. And in terms of uh, getting the getting the clients, I mean, how easy has that been? Um, it's been interesting. I would say um, our client base has evolved somewhat. Uh, I think particularly as we've been doing this now for three years, and I think in those three years, um, humans have become a lot more comfortable with um the idea of um the crowd the idea of the gig economy mm. that that freelancing is is not um secondary that flexible working isn't isn't sec secondary attitudes have really changed technology has really changed as well um and so i think whilst we started off doing um traditional uh, agency services so so providing things that clients are familiar with but delivering it in a non-traditional way so delivering it through our community using cloud computing and, and inevitably doing that and it, at, a, at a lower price i suppose or at a price that represents better value because we're not carrying the same overheads as our competitors but i think increasingly what we're doing is seeing clients come to us and say hang on a minute you've got a really diverse interesting talent mix here that could help us answer this problem that traditional agencies aren't necessarily set up to solve it might be right. that we can combine expertise from marketing and hr uh, for argument's sake to develop um you know an internal um training or or system or campaign or something like that so i think um we've we've never necessarily had a, a problem attracting clients because there are lots of benefits to the model um it's it's great value you get great access to people in a really fast and flexible and fluid way um but i think what's happening is now we're seeing clients come to us with more 
um, considered uh, briefs that really leverage the model in a more interesting way. And that's the re- where it starts to get really exciting from my perspective. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Um, and, and in terms of, so the the reason you started the business is to, um, I guess, free up your time a little bit more, right? Or to give you more kind of flexibility with, with your life. And you are a startup, right? And startup mm. life is uh, well known to be very stressful and time consuming. So has that worked out for you or have you found it's actually it's... just as much work? Um, I think what I've discovered is that it's not about how much work you're doing, but whether you are positively energized by that work. Or okay. Not. So I think um, there are positive and negative uh, stressors. Um, and when you're stressed, that can either give you energy or take energy away. And um, I've found that um, by starting out and being a um, the owner of a business and running Hoxby um, and building it in the image of what I think a business should be, everything that's kind of come along that's a stressor or, or that gets in the way of that, I'm much more positively predisposed to to deal with. Really? Um, yeah, because I think I understand why I'm doing it. I understand where we're going and I'm, um, I'm emotionally invested in the outcome, but I'm not, um, I'm not getting myself, I'm not frustrated by it in the same way as I was. Um, and I think that's, that's a lot to do with having a clear sense of purpose of kind of why I'm doing it. And I think uh, when I reflect on my sort of burnout uh, period of time, I think it's because I, I was validating my time against how much I was doing rather than what's the quality of what I'm outputting, what's the quality of the, my relationships with my family, um, and what's the role of this in in this work I'm doing in, in the grand scheme of my life. I hadn't really defined any of that at that time. But I think where I'm at now um, is, you know, I am i don't know how many hours I work. Let me put it that way. Um, what, what I do is I judge, I judge whether, it, whether I'm happy or not by um, the quality of my relationships with my wife and with my daughter, with the rest of my family, um, and also with how well is Hoxby doing overall? How many Hoxbys have we managed to find work for um, that they can do around everything else that's going on in their lives? And those are those are much more meaningful measures of success. Um, and they, I suppose, they're infinite as well. They they, they will always be my measures for success, um, and there may never be a sort of end an end to that. But that's that's fine. Yeah, that's incredible, actually. That was going to be the point about your family was going to be my next question, which was even though you may be working the same amount of hours, presumably you those that time you do spend with your family, you feel much more present and you feel like that's real quality time rather than, you know, just being absent, even though you're there. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. I think I'm definitely not working as many hours. I should say that Um, I I definitely um, spend more actual time probably with my with my daughter particularly. So since we uh, since we started a family, I've worked four days a week technically. So I I say I, I don't work uh, a Tuesday. That's that's my day for for Olivia. Um, the other the other four days I I am working. Yeah, well, th- I mean, it sounds like an amazing way to work in a, in many ways. You know, for women, this must be just a really exciting way of working because you think about the amount of talent that is lost when women leave the workplace when they have children and most of them do not come back in to what they were doing before i don't have the figures for that that's anecdotal but i i expect the the data bears that out and and you know that's that's a huge loss to companies right it absolutely is yeah i mean there's a massive 
uh, there's a massive issue with um, equality and and diversity more broadly still um, within the workplace, which is surprising given how long we've been talking about it for. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, one of the big motivations is is to try and create a a world of work that that my daughter can um, grow into that gives her the you know the the equality of opportunity that she deserves to 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 go and succeed um and that means um changing um attitudes changing work structures to be more equal so that sounds like an amazing concept where are you guys now how's it going and what does the future hold so um we are the big questions for you we've, there we've just closed our third year um and we have we've never been in better health in so much as we've got um probably more hoxbees than we've ever had um we've got more uh, established clients than we've ever had uh, we're working with some really exciting companies um companies that could take us in a uh, a new direction an interesting direction depending on how big they become can um, you mention any or uh, is that i can probably secret? talk about a couple yeah we're working with um amazon web services amazing uh, we're working i mean that's a monster business i mean they're a monster in themselves yeah absolutely yeah um we're also doing some work with Deloitte uh, and wow. um, Perigo, who are a pharmaceutical firm. Merck. So you guys, you guys aren't messing around. I mean, these are big boys. We're not messing around. No, um, yeah, I like that. There's, there's businesses out there who are ready to um, to do things differently now, or at least to be learning what they need to be doing. And, and those are the companies that we're working with. Yeah. Um, they're 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 tapping into us because it's um, because of the speed with which we can get things done and the quality with which it can be done at the same time. Um, so yeah, we, we've got um, exciting clients that we're working with, and I think um, the really uh, the really exciting thing is that at the moment, all we're talking about is how the Hoxby model can change the way that work gets done in a, in the context of business. Mm -hmm. So we're helping businesses across. So com companies like the ones I've mentioned, we're helping them across the sort of traditional back end areas of marketing, finance, admin, operations and HR, uh, as well as doing some consultancy on how they can plan for the future uh, and the future of work. But that's still within a business context. And I don't see any reason why Hoxby can't be applied to a whole load of other industries um, as a as a concept of work, um, whether that's healthcare or teaching or I don't know. <laughs> there's an that, there's that an, is fascinating. There's an endless list of industries that could benefit from this type of model that would make far better use, so utilize the global workforce much more effectively than the current um, sort of nine to five employment structure does. Um, so that's a much further down the line. <laughs> um, let's start by kind of conquering the world of business first. But, um, but yeah, we think that um, in time, there's, there's no, there's no limit to what uh, the Hoxby model might, might accomplish. Incredible. Incredible. Um, well, that's been uh, a fascinating insight into um hogsby collective and the story of how it came into being where can uh people find out more about the company uh what's the website and also kind of the the social and are you on twitter or anything like that it, i'll put it underneath the podcast as well but feel free now to yeah absolutely we're on hoxby.com h-o-x-b-y um and so that's our website uh, we are on Twitter. Uh, we are at Hoxby Collective. Uh, and we're also on Instagram as well, as well as LinkedIn. Uh, both uh, at Hoxby Collective. Well, Alex, thank you so much for your time there and telling us a bit more about it. I My wish pleasure. you all the best uh, with the future of the Hoxby Collective. 
and I agree with you. I think it's it's the way it's all going. Um, and yeah, come Thank back you. and tell us, uh, you know, in a few months or a year's time or something like that, how it's going. I'd love to. Thanks very much, Tom.